Welcome back, Warrior Kids. My name is Pam Palmiter, and I am the host of the Warrior Kids podcast, which is taped before our famous live studio audience cricket. I'm a Mi'kmaq professor who has created this podcast to celebrate everything Indigenous and work with Warrior Kids to help make the world a better place. If that sounds like something you'd like to do, then join us here every Wednesday and sometimes every second Wednesday, and learn some really cool things along the way. And wow, thank you warrior kids, parents, and teachers for all the hard work you've been doing to help educate and take action on the important things that we talk about here on the Warrior Kids Podcast. Nothing makes Cricket and I happier than to receive your photos, drawings, stories, and even blogs about warrior kids being, well, warrior kids. Since our last podcast, five-year-old Yatri from Toronto in Canada sent us the most amazing drawing of animals playing lacrosse. Do you all remember the lacrosse episode where we learned about the Haudenosaunee story of how lacrosse was played by animals up in the sky? I love that episode because we got to hear from lacrosse players about how important the sport is to them. I also really like that Yatri drew an antelope a turtle, and two birds playing lacrosse. It means that I could just imagine what it would be like in my head. See, even the birds like the picture. You can see her picture on our Warrior Kids podcast Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We also heard from Sage again. Do you all remember Sage from Los Angeles, California in the United States? That's the warrior kid who drew us beautiful pictures of Turtle Island and animals that live in the water. You can see both of those pictures on our website under the Warriors section at www.warriorkidspodcast.com. Well, Sage went for a walk in the forest and remembered our episode called Trees Are Our Relatives and decided that he and his mom would spend time there just listening to the sounds of the forest. Yeah, exactly like that. Then Sage sent us a beautiful picture of the forest and all the things that were there. Thank you, Sage. We'll make sure to post this on our website as well. But exciting warrior kids work didn't stop there. Five-year-old Elspeth from Vermont, United States, sent us a letter to share that Elspeth wants to be a doctor when she grows up. Isn't that awesome? We know you can do it, Elspeth. See, even the monkeys know you can do it. Warrior kids like Elspeth can do anything they put their minds to. And you'll never guess what else. No, no, you'll never guess. Okay, alligator, I'll tell you. Cricket and I received a whole bunch of artwork from Queen Victoria Public School in Toronto. I know, isn't that so exciting? A very special grade two class listened to our Warrior Kids episode called Nigma, My Family, and then drew pictures of all their families and got their teacher to send them to us. We saw pictures of moms, dads, brothers and sisters, grandparents, and even pets. Thank you so much for sharing your artwork. All this Warrior Kid education and action makes us very happy here. It reminds us of how important artwork is for so many reasons. Some Warrior Kids use their artwork as decoration to cover their rooms in a whole bunch of beautiful pictures. Some use artwork to express their feelings, like when they are happy or sad about something. One of the pictures we received from Queen Victoria Public School's grade two class was a picture of family activity day where the whole family was biking and they all had smiling faces. When I see this picture, I think of a family all together doing a special activity, like biking, and all having a good time. Another picture was that of a grandmother and grandchild planting flowers in the garden. 
when I see this picture and look at all the beautiful flowers and the grandmother and grandchild working together with smiles on their faces, that makes me really happy. The artist who made this picture shared with us that it was a picture of a grandmother who passed away, which is also very sad. But even though the grandchild was sad and missing their grandmother, they drew this picture because it was a happy memory. In this way, art can share all different kinds of emotions all at the same time. They can reflect happy memories and even sad memories at missing someone who has passed on. That's one of the reasons why I love art so much. One single drawing or painting can be about many things at once. For example, one of the drawings from the grade two class was of a family dressed in their traditional Tibetan clothing to celebrate Tibetan New Year and welcome guests to their home. In that picture, I learned that the Tibetan New Year is also referred to as Losar, and that traditional Tibetan clothing is beautiful and very colorful. I also saw some new words, Tashi Dele, and I didn't know what they meant. So, as a warrior, I went on the internet and did some research about what does that mean, and I found out that it's a greeting that's often used during Tibetan New Year. In this one picture, there was so much to enjoy and learn all at the same time. There are many other forms of artwork too, besides visual art like drawings and paintings. Other forms of visual art include sculptures. What's a sculpture? Well, it's when you take clay or wood or stone or some other material and use your hands or tools to shape it into something like a face or an animal or even a pot. When I was younger, our class went to a pottery studio where we got to make pottery out of clay that comes from the earth. It sort of felt like sticky mud. And then we shaped it into bowls and then the teacher baked it in the oven. Then we went back after a few days and painted our pottery. But art doesn't have to be a thing, like a painting or a wood carving. It can also be a physical action, like singing, dancing, or playing music. In Mi'kmaq, the word for dance is amalkat, he or she dances, amalkat, and the word for sing is gedebegiet. Gedebegiet, he or she sings. And that reminds me, I just love going to native powwows because I get to see all different kinds of native artwork in a whole bunch of formats. I see people singing, drumming, and dancing to their traditional songs, which are different for each traditional indigenous nation. So the songs and dances for the Mi'kmaq are different than those from the Gayankahaga or Mohawks. Powwows are a coming together of all different indigenous nations to share our unique cultures and art. At powwows, there are often families there selling their artwork, like handmade baskets, handwoven rugs, beaded jewelry, and even regalia. Regalia is the word we use to refer to the clothing that we wear at powwows or other traditional events and reflects the colors, symbols, and styles of our nation. For example, the Mi'kmaq and Wollastook often have swirly scroll designs in our regalia, whereas the Gayankahaga or Mohawks often have strawberries on some of theirs. In this way, art can reflect one's culture, family, nation, history, and even be part of ceremonies and powwows. Does anyone remember the Warrior Kids podcast episode with Celia Wilson about jingle dress dancing? She shared with us the healing power behind the jingle dress dance. So art can also be about health and well-being. I mean, think about it. If you're dancing in powwows all summer, that's pretty good exercise. But in native traditions, art can also represent law as well. It's true. 
Take, for example, the artistic skills that go into making wampum belts, like those made by the Haudenosaunee peoples. While these hand-beaded belts are beautiful, some of them also record important points in history, like the selection of leaders, new laws that are created, and even agreements. Some wampum belts represent treaties or agreements between the Haudenosaunee and the people who settled here in what is now Canada and the United States, and write down rules about how they are supposed to live together. In this way, Native art represents many different aspects of our nations, sometimes for beauty, sometimes for healing, and sometimes to ensure that everybody knows the law. Many Native peoples today use their artwork to inspire people to take action on important issues, like saving the whales, protecting honeybees, or being kind to one another. In this way, and it might be my most favorite way, art is used for advocacy. Advocacy is when you help encourage other people to be like warrior kids and learn about important things so you can take action to make the world a better place. I just love art. So what do you think about that, warrior kids? Art is literally everywhere and in everything. Art can express our emotions, tell stories, share culture, and even tell us about the law. And art can help inspire people to take important actions. So never think that your art is limited to only drawing or painting. You could write a story, read a poem, or you could sing and dance. Does anyone remember the Mi'kmaq words for dance and sing? That's right. The Mi'kmaq word for dance is amalkat. Amalkat, he or she dances. And the word for sing is gedabegiet. Gedabegiet, he or she sings. So, warrior kids, how can we use your art to help inspire others to take action to make the world a better place? Art for advocacy. Well, you and your family could write a blog about how to protect water sources, like lakes and rivers. Our last episode, Warrior Kids Can Blog Too, was all about how kids can use blogs to advocate for important action. Or your class could draw some pictures about all the living things that depend on trees for their homes. You could even go around and take photos of the world around you that shows the beauty of this planet and why we should all work hard to take care of it. Writings, paintings, drawings, blogs, poems, and photographs are always welcome here at the Warrior Kids Podcast. Your parents can help contact us on our website at www.warriorkidspodcast.com or they can email us directly at warriorkidspodcast at hotmail.com. Thank you all for listening, learning, and acting. Till next time, Warrior Kids artists. Later, Gators. Thank you.